Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again with a new layout update video. So mainly we're going to focus on some rolling stock and locomotives that came in. There has been a few scenic changes to the layout since, since the last video, but not too much. But let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at what we've got done so far. So mostly the last month I've been working on getting this coal train put together. This is a mixture of Walther's and uh, Intermountain uh, Value Line coal hoppers. Uh, the BNSF one, this first set right here, I've had for a little while now, but I just got around to putting new couplers on it. It had these really weird couplers that just didn't work right, so I changed them out and put Katie's on them. And then these Intermountain Value Line ones and the black BNSF ones came from my friend Michael Ingram. So thanks, Michael, for selling me those. And uh, made for a really good-sized train. I've got a 17-car coal train now, which for my layout is pretty big, but I want to get a few more sets of these hoppers and expand and maybe do a 30-car train, which would be really cool, and uh, have DPUs on it as well, which would be really cool to see. And then these are the black Walther's BNSF ones. Pretty cool cars. I really like them a lot. So in addition to those coal hoppers from Michael, he also threw in this Bachman uh, Norfolk Southern Jersey Central Heritage unit. And uh, nice model. It's uh, seen some abuse. It's missing the pilot, or the snowplow rather. It's missing the front coupler and it's missing one of the number boards. So. I need to see if I can fix that, and then also if I turn the headlights on, let's see here, you can see one of the ditch lights here is burnt out, so got to find a fix for that, uh, I might send it to my friend Kerry and have him look at it and see what can be done, but these are good models, it sounds really nice too. Bachman did a good job on these heritage units, that's for sure. So, I'll see if I can nurse this one back to health and give it, give it the attention that it deserves, and we'll go from there. I ended up having to send the BC Rail and the Wisconsin Central Heritage Units back to scale trains to get some motor repairs done. So they both got brand new motors. The uh, BC Rail one arrived first. But the Wisconsin Central is on the way. I just got the email from Scale Trains that it's coming back. So that's good. And a pretty quick turnaround time on them as well. So, but now if both of these units should hopefully be working well. The BC, I've been running the BC Rail a lot to break it in. So I'll be doing the same with the Wisconsin Central once it arrives. While I'm over here at the Roundhouse area, I'll show you this little expansion I've done. I just took some black easy track that I had laying around just to test this area out. Um, where these locomotives are sitting right here, this is going to be a spur coming off of the turntable and I'm going to just use regular Atlas snap track to uh, make that or maybe flex track, we'll see, along with this area here. I'll also use flex track to do the stalls in the turntable area, but this area is going to be the easy track and uh, it'll be eventually replaced with nickel silver sections and this is where the slump down will be right about through this area here to lead to the turntable area and I'm going to use Atlas Flex Track for that. Kind of a weird way of doing it but when you are doing a layout like this you have to improvise so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then the only real thing I've done as far as scenery is concerned is right over here in this little corner of the layout. I took the rest of those trees that I got from my friend Tim and put them in this little area right here to form a little grove. And I also put some ground cover and some paint down to fill in this little area and it looks pretty good. I do need to get some scenic cement in here to bond it all in place because I ran out of that. So that's on the list of things to do. But aside from that it looks pretty good. I put all the indigenous trees here in the back, and then the pine trees are all here in the front. So they look pretty good. One major change that I've been doing over here is upgrading my storage and display areas under the layout. So what I got here are a couple of kitchen cabinet sets from my mom. 
and I also have a display case that I've had for many, many years. I actually used it to hold my old Power Ranger collection back in the day, but uh, now I'm using it to hold diesel locomotives. And uh, you can fit about 30 diesels into that case, which is very handy. And as for the drawers, they work pretty well. They pull out just simply like that. So I'm using this one for freight car storage on this side. And it's good to keep things out of the box like this. So that way I can gain access to it a little bit more easily. So that's what I'm doing as far as that's concerned. And it's working pretty well so far. I'm also using this old bookshelf here to hold my locomotive boxes and various things. So that's helping out quite a bit. And then over here on this side, I've got the old uh, collapsible Costco table that I had under the layout for a while. I'm using that to hold some of my larger sets and locomotives, like my intermodal sets. And my scale trains boxes are all under there. And then under the layout, there are some storage possibilities down here as well. So I've got some boxes down here that has like my UP excursion cars. My grain train boxes are down here. My auto racks are down here. So yeah just a lot of really good storage opportunity down here under the layout so i see i have a little dalek infestation here don't know what how don't know exactly how that happened but uh yeah that's about all that's going on here guys not really a whole lot happening so just been having fun running this coal train and running the heritage unit and other things so I will let you guys go and give you another run by of that coal train, and I will see you guys next time. This is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.